people, it's your girl Adela. I'm so, so excited that we finally got to see what you guys made possible among the Cameroonian refugees in Ogoja, Nigeria. Honestly, I am so grateful to everybody that contributed $10, 20 50 100 $1,000, $100,000, just to make life better for our brothers and sisters who fled from Cameroon to Nigeria. As usual, I have to thank all the board members of Kawa Foundation because without these people, none of these things will happen. I mean, you guys know I'm not. What can your girl do? Dr. Baba Adam. Thank you so much. I, he wanted to come with us to Ogoja, by the way, even though his mom passed away at that time. But he couldn't make it at the last minute because of work. We were talking about flying together. So thank you, Dr. Baba Adam, and also Dr. Sesan Oluwashola at UCH in Ibadan. Thank you to Becky Hashbaga in New York, and thank you to Kefi Kogosise in Botswana. By the way, most of them, if not all, trekked. They fled by feet from Cameroon to Nigeria. Now, huge shout out, first of all, to the crew that went, starting with Dr. Sesan Oluwashola from UCH. CH, one of our board members and he's the one that supervised this whole project the borehole the toilet he literally traveled from Ibadan to Ogoja several times while we were constructing the borehole and the toilet also give it up for Lade King Owolabi O'Shea a fellow youtuber check her out on YouTube by the way and subscribe to her YouTube channel Lade Deo that's the name of her YouTube channel <laughs> and also besides Koledo of course Koledo was with me uh, we had another esteemed cameraman and video editor please give it up for Jibola Olad, you know, of course, Koyodo was jealous that we had Jibola with us. You know, you needed help. It was too much work for you anyway. I don't know what you're, anyway. So, uh, uh, and then of course, there was Koyodo and myself. We don't need introduction. So, um, <laughs> we flew from Lagos to Enugu. And then we hired a commercial vehicle to take us first to Makodi in Benue for us to see some of the Nigerian refugees uh, who were displaced by herdsmen whom you have made possible for us to feed a number of times and provide with reusable pirates. I've done reports on that. So just a side note by the way, how do people travel on those roads? I, I, I was like, wait, what is happening here? It was alarming to me. I was like, Lord Jesus, I was praying the whole time. I said, Father, this was not the agreement. This is not how it's going to end. No, I'm telling you, those roads, they were like death traps. I'm, I'm seriously, if you are not religious, once you get on a Nigerian road like this, you become born again. <laughs> You because everybody prays when they're traveling in Nigeria. Whether you're a Christian or Muslim, everybody's like, Father, Father. Like, for real, Nigerians need to demand better from their government. These things were not roads. People were driving on the other lane in order to avoid potholes. And you know, that leads to a lot of accidents. Oh, by the way, after counting like 10 police and military checkpoints within, like, within an hour, I just, I stopped counting. I was like, wait, this is so much. Why do we need so much? It was supposed to be a five hour journey, by the way, from Enugu to Makori, but something happened on the way that made it seven hours. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm making a whole video about that experience. <laughs> so we had to get a soldier to escort us after that incident. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of the road. So when we got to Makodi in Benue State, we met up with Pastor Joel and his wife, Dr. Grace. You guys remember the missionary whose wife is a medical doctor. Both of them have been helping us a lot in reaching the Nigerian refugees who are in Makodi area. So it was really nice to finally meet them face to face. And we had the best pepper soup ever. Oh shit, Benue people, you they chop collards. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to one of the refugee camps in Makodi to distribute reusable pads that night, which you made possible. Uh, at this point, I'd like to give a huge shout out to two sisters here in the US. I believe they live in Atlanta, Georgia, Nia and Jani, who watched this show and saw what we were doing. And besides what everybody else donated, they decided to do their own fundraising. I was like, wait, what? And they raised $886. Come on. That's about $312,000. And they asked us to use that to buy reusable pads for the refugees. I was like, these are kids and they're making a difference also in Nigeria. Oh shit, thank you so much, guys. Their mom was the one that called me and I just want to thank her. Thank you so much, mommy. And thanks to the girls and thanks to everybody that donated money to these girls. Their money bought 320 reusable pads. Each pad is nearer than 80 naira. And each woman gets four reusable pads, one pad holder, one bar of soap, 
one underwear and a ziplock bag so they changed the lives of 320 women and so we distributed a huge bag that night in Makodi and I come and see people fighting to get part <laughs> I mean, some people don't understand what I'm talking about because when you're a refugee, you are very, very, very limited in resources, but your period will still come every month. Amen, somebody? So for these women, giving them these pads means that for the next two years, for the next two years, they don't have to worry about pads when their period comes. So thank you to these girls and to everybody else that donated money because uh, the 320 was not enough we added to it. So I just want to thank them and to thank everybody. So of course, we were there when the rain started. It was a major, major rain. So we got to see the tents that the government made for them. Ha! My people, eh? You know, after that visit, I suddenly realized that I have absolutely no reason ever, whatsoever, to complain in my life. I'm like, why do I ever complain, eh? So how many people will stay here? Away, I stay here with my wife. Wow, so four people, yes. just okay, So this is where the man said, yeah, that is Gadi now. Invite me, I like Gadi. I have granules in there. This is the kitchen. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> So this is where they sleep? Yes. How many people? They just live with three children. Uh, madam, you don't smoke? Yeah. Eh? How are you doing now? <laughs> this one, they make you feel better. Happy? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that too much, oh, because okay. of lung cancer. Yeah. 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 By the way, we got to meet some members of Take It Back who were also visiting the refugee camp to distribute some things for them. So it was really nice to meet some of them. They said they watched my show. I was like, well, well, thank you so much for watching. So the plan was to go to another refugee camp in Makodi that night. But because of the two hour delay that I talked about that happened and because we got to Benue really late, we couldn't go to the second refugee camp that night. We drove by it. That's the second one, but we couldn't stop them. So after all that, we were looking for a place to sleep. We were looking for a hotel. Ah, father, we suffered. <laughs> So we were looking for a hotel all night. It was crazy. I don't know what time it is, but we've been driving around trying to find hotels. Oh. <laughs> so we've been to two hotels. Yeah, they are fully that. booked. Okay. Uh, we called another one, it's fully booked. We are calling yeah, another one. So it's been real. So we finally found a place to, to lay our heads. And then of course we had to get up very early so that we can travel to cross river states to the Cameroonian refugee settlement. Now on our way, we had to stop for breakfast because we were all, we were hungry. So we stopped for bread and akara. <laughs> I like bread and akara or you know fried yam dundu yes dundu and akara I don't care <laughs> don't tell my husband that I bought akara by the roadside though. anyway <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> where is watching this now you grabbed that also, it was my first time in Tiefland, so I had to get this really nice top as evidence that I was in Tiefland, oh shit, and I loved it. By the way, the road was not better, it was the same thing. In fact, there were places that were worse. I was just like, Father, is this how it is? I accept Abuja, eh? So, we drove four hours to get to Ogoja in Cross Rivers, and we saw the Cameroonian settlement. It is huge. It's a town in itself. The UN is giving them materials to build houses for themselves uh, because their projection is that they will be there for at least the next five years. So, huge kudos to the UN for making them comfortable. Also, the UN is giving everybody, everybody above the age of six months, 7,000 naira every month, 7,000 per head. That's about $20. And that's what they use for their upkeep. So the first thing we did was to meet with those who had been learning uh, how to sew clothes, fashion designers. I'm so grateful to the viewers who donates everything to everyone. Thank you. So make it possible for us, so that we shall not be jobless and useless. Yes. They give, give back us for many things. Look at what has happened. So we are grateful. And we say thank you. We thank you everyone. We thank everyone that contributes to help us. We thank everyone that put a smile onto our face. We say God will bless you people. The God that give you that heart, He will restore more for you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Do that so for us. You will never lack in your generation yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Do it back unto what God will do it back to your family, Amen. and He will bless you people in Jesus' name. We, the apprentice of Sister Judy, in fact, Judy, we say we are highly thank you. God will bless you for us forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, thank you.
thank you so much for changing their lives. And I want to thank this woman for volunteering. She didn't collect wow. any money she did all this for this. She just did this for her people and she did it free. Mother, and, uh, thank you. Happy. Mother, thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank God. Even though you have learned much, you still need to continue to learn. Because let me tell you what the others do. She's the one standing. They just teach you simple style, simple techniques. They keep the sophisticated ones. Yes. The deep ones. You just realize they are doing only small, small things. Mm -hmm. And the complex ones are still coming back to the yoga. So, but what will make your yoga to show you the complex one is your attitude. So I tried on this lady's dress, and you know, it fit me so well. No come out and make it a bag. No come out. But they said I got some get out. I do custom. Who made this one though? Who made this one? Yes. Ah, madam. Oh, be begging. We don't come out together. Me and you, we don't go. Oh, be begging is going to America. Oh yeah. Say tell them bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Unfortunately, it, for, it was for a customer, so I had to order my own. And she finished it while we were still there. I was like, fall down, shit. And I bought it. By the way, that is what I'm wearing right now. This outfit, thank you so much. <laughs> this was made by one of the refugees. Can you believe? Am I not beautiful? Yes, I am. So yeah, this is the phone number of their teacher. The woman I taught them how to sew. If anyone would like to order something to encourage them and to patronize them. If anybody wants to order, you can ask for my girl. This is her name. Or, <laughs> or you can just ask Madame to hook you up with anybody else. Just make sure that you pay them well. And if any of them is watching, if any of the refugees is watching, please do not overcharge people. <laughs> Otherwise, they will not patronize you. Just charge the regular price and people will buy from you, okay? They had four different sewing classes, by the way. I was really impressed. I was honestly impressed. I mean, look at what this guy made. I mean, look at what this guy made, for real. Come, come on. <laughs> Also, this is the third set of fashion designers. Altogether, I think about 24 people learned how to sew and now they've all perfected it. That's like 24 people that can now make money when they leave the refugee camp. Even at the refugee camp, if you order from them, they can start making money. <laughs> okay. I beg. Fix me up, eh? Yeah, <laughs> you really need to fix up. And then we visited the barbing salon where 12 guys learned how to barb. By the way, they all did each other's hair. And it was wonderful to know that all they need now is clippers and they can start making money. Actually, as a refugee, being trained to become a barber in the settlement, I think I'm happy. Well, thanks to Pure Foundation for giving me the privilege to become a barber. Might be, who knows what tomorrow holds for us. Mm. I'll be doing that while assisting myself in small yeah. Thank you. And then we went to those who learned how to make soap, all kinds of soap, uh, liquid soap, powdered soap, bar soap, uh, detergent. So many people were at this class, by the way. I think about 40 people. Um, altogether, about 80 people have been trained. So while these people are graduating, a new set will begin their own training. And then, of course, we saw the borehole that you guys made possible for us to dig. Thank you once again. <laughs> so um, now other organizations have also built boreholes for them, which is wonderful. We're so happy that they now have multiple sources of water because it's a big settlement. But of course, ours was the first functioning borehole on the settlement. So finally, we got to see the toilet that you made possible. I was so impressed. I was really impressed. It's six for women, six for men, and two urinals. And then they have a faucet, sink where they could wash their hands, and they also have solar light inside the toilet. Thank you for the This is what you guys have made possible. You need like something to divide so that whoever is peeing is not looking at somebody else's thing. You need something here, just from here, and divide. And put a small one. By the way, thank God that we built those toilets because we ourselves needed toilet. There was no toilet on our way there, of course. So thank God that there was toilet when we got there. Honestly, I'm so excited that we were able to do this. Thank you so much to you guys. And 
I wish that our officials would do more things like this. And what I mean by that is like to do something that they themselves would use yeah. from according to this place today. We spent about four hours on the road. And to be honest with you, there was no toilet. Thank God we built a toilet here, and not just a toilet, a toilet that we ourselves can use. And sometimes I feel like if our officials would build us things that they would use, then they would do better quality job. If they would build us schools where their children would go to school, our schools would be better. Not only whether there is no toilet on the road, so I need to use myself. And then there was no toilet again until we got to Enugu. Oh, by the way, I thought I should show you guys the toilet that they had been using. And I'm sorry that this will gross some people out, so you don't have to look at this if you, you can look away right now. You want to, you want to open it? To give us instructions, oh! advice. Oh my God. You see what I'm saying? That was just, after they opened that one, I said, don't open another one. <laughs> but you know, it's hard to empower people if they don't have access to basic things, especially the women. I don't know how they do it, especially during their period. How do you use a toilet like that? So the structures that we built cost a lot of money, but it showed them that you care and they are more open to the empowerment. So of course now they have water and they have good toilets, all thanks to you. A huge shout out, by the way, to the company called Ilos that makes solar book lamps. I've talked about them before on this show. Uh, please order their book lamp if you're yet to. This company donated five solar street lamps for us to mount at the toilet site. As in, like, wait, what? They just called me and said, Oh, we want to be part of this project and so we are donating five solar street lamps i'm like full time i'm indebted and i'm extremely grateful and we delivered that to the chairman of the settlement four at the toilet and also one at the borehole site so that people can have access at night may god bless you i love um once again their solar book lamp is great for students in nigeria that are facing power outage up nepa down nepa all you need to do is charge this thing and to charge you, you just have to put it out in the sun it is solar and it will also charge your cell phone like so yes order your today uh, if not for anything the fact that they invested in the refugees please help their markets eh? now the best part is we got to meet the people we spoke with them and we listened to their stories as well and then we gave out more reusable parts for the women once again it is always a fight because we were targeting teenagers and there were so many grown women who were pretending to be teenagers because of that <laughs> Now, at the end of the day, uh, we were all exhausted. As we were exhausted. Poor Jibola, can you imagine? And we didn't even know where Kaledo was. I, just, I was the one filming. Can you imagine? I was filming for Kaledo. I don't know where it was. Where is Kaledo, by the way? We don't know. In the middle of all this. It's Sunday, I know where <laughs> oh, that's Sunday. You where is Kaledo? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I should not be the one filming this. I'm okay in the eat inside. In the chop, as the mama puts right here. In the chop with the doctor says Yes, they were eating mama puts. So, <laughs> mama put is actually very good. Some people did not eat at that mama put. I don't know what their problem is. But doctor was bold. He went in there and he conquered. Don't hate me when you see this video. <laughs> At this point, we're done with infrastructure works among these refugees. All we want to focus on right now is empowering those who, who have graduated with equipment and the resources that they need for, the, for them to be making money on their own. So if anyone would still like to be a part of this, that's what we need right now. You can donate new clippers, manual sewing machines in Nigeria because getting the stuff to Nigeria will not be funny. Or money to buy any of these things, including soap making materials. So that is what we want to focus on right now we're no longer building new structures because other people are coming in to build new structures as well so we just want to focus on the empowerment so i'm going to give you a breakdown of how we spent the money please keep in mind that we found out that things were really expensive in that area we had to get a lot of materials from calabar materials in ogoja area were very very expensive because it's way out there so although there were times that we had to buy things in the area because uh, it was just too much to travel back and forth. From doing this project, I found out that the prices of things is not the same across Nigeria. <laughs>
like something that you get for cheap in like or something it's totally it's totally different when you get to some areas so for the toilet we spent two thousand five hundred and forty five dollars on cement sand and gravel that's about eight hundred and eighty eight thousand naira and we use send wave by the way to send all the money that was raised on gofundme so i'm using their conversion rate they made it easy for us to send the money as people were donating so that work didn't have to stop and within minutes we are able to purchase materials in nigeria when people donate money so also we spent 723 dollars on blocks or bricks also the digging of the water channel from the bowl to the toilet was 152 dollars also the digging building and covering of the septic tank the soccer was 1275 dollars the labor workmanship for the bricklayers the carpenters the painters the laborers water fetching and so on was three thousand three hundred and sixty dollars now we were hoping that those who are able to do these things among them you know like bricklayers like carpenters would do it for free since it would be their toilet but that's didn't happen <laughs> so we actually had to bring workers from outside the settlement because they were charging less the workers from outside were charging less also transportation of materials because we had to get a lot of materials from Calabar and not just once you know several times it was four hundred and seven dollars for the transportation all the faucets for washing hands some people call them sink you know and the wood for roofing the toilet was $1,274 the plumbing work for the men and women's toilet and getting water from the borehole to the tank to the toilet by the way we had to mount another tank at the toilet so that there will always be water at the toilet all the plumbing work was $2,602 the empowerment project buying of sewing machines uh, clippers soap making materials and so on and so forth was $1,759 the tile for the toilet was $2,522. The doors and the PVC for the ceiling was $2,106. The paint for both inside and outside was $674. Please keep in mind that this toilet is actually really big. It's like a four bedroom. So we put solar panel inside the toilet so that they don't have to replace bulb light all the time. So we put solar light in there and so that they will always have light inside the toilet. And so the solar panel, its installation as well as the iron rods for the scaffold for the water tank and the installation of the scaffold i told you that we had to buy another tank for the toilet so everything that i just mentioned including the new tank was four thousand nine hundred and eighty four dollars we had to treat the borehole by the way so that it's safe for drink and certified and that cost two hundred and fourteen dollars miscellaneous expenses including uh buying things like nails buying phone credits to call different contractors different business people to buy gain over things to monitor the project back and forth paying some people to get things moving you know what i mean <laughs> everything for miscellaneous expenses came to seven hundred and ten dollars so doctors and son went there a number of times while this was going on in order to oversee the project each time he would fly to enugu and then drive four hours from enugu to ogoja and spend the night there also there was a time that pastor joel went from Mac and we also had to spend the night so Dr. Sesson's flight land transportation as well as pastors land transportation and doctor's accommodation every time he went pastor's accommodation when he went uh, at the hotel they stayed the food they ate everything was eight hundred and eight dollars so this trip the transportation for those of us that went from Lagos uh, to Makodi and to Ogoja including our hotel accommodation food paying soldiers for being our escort chartering a vehicle from Enugu to Makodi to Ogoja everything that we spent came to two thousand two hundred and forty one dollars so there was an Nigerian man at the Cameroonian settlement that really really helped us in getting things moving you know his name is Mr. Pius and we gave him two hundred dollars that is seventy thousand naira. so all these totals about twenty eight thousand five hundred and fifty six dollars a little over ten million naira. if you deduct the cost of our trip it comes down to twenty six thousand three hundred and fifteen dollars that's about nine point two million naira for the toilet and the first phase of empowerment please don't forget that we dug a borehole before building the toilet and installed four tanks as well as 12 taps we also bought a power generator we bought more than 1,000 reusable pads for women each pad is 980 naira like I said so to buy 1,000 pads is 980,000 naira uh, let's just say 1 million naira for 1,000 pads and we also bought medications worth 232,000 naira I did a breakdown of the cost of the borehole the pads the medication in a previous video if you're yet to watch it please you can watch it so that is how we spent the money that you guys donated we did not chop one naira and we just want to thank you so so much for trusting us to do this thank you so much mommies and daddies uncles and aunties all my brothers and sisters 
thank you to everybody that donated for real we're so grateful to you guys you are the one that made this possible thank you i'm so grateful to every one of you so thank you so much to all the board members once again thank you for the girls that did fundraising we appreciate you guys thank you to the, to the company that donated the the solar street lands we really appreciate you guys so like i said earlier if anyone would still like to be a part of this project all we want to do now is focus on empowering those who have learned a new skill and then we also want to start the training of other people so thank you once again for giving because i know that you have your own challenges as well you have your own needs but because you decided to meet the needs of these people may you never lack may god bless you all thank you so much you guys not doing much guess what i'm just keeping it real by the way, you guys should follow me on Instagram because I'm uploading pictures. There are so many pictures from this project that doesn't fit in this video. So follow me on Instagram. I'm uploading all those pictures. Follow me on Facebook if you are yet to follow me on Twitter. I'm able to upload those pictures on all those platforms. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're yet to. And please click on the bell button so that you can always be notified when I upload a new video. All right, y'all, it's Viru and I'm keeping you right up in here. Until next time, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.